Sam Bircher and Danny Eaton Lees against Nathan Davies and Luke Vokes. Loser goes home. Not technically, because they have to play a match in the third round, but they can't qualify. This is a shootout match, an eliminator, and both of these pairs had issues in their first round matches that they would like to iron out, but I think the pair that I'd be most disappointed would be the pair at the table right now. Luke Vokes and Nathan Davies showed us nowhere near their respective levels in that first match. And they haven't had much time to sort of go away, let the dust settle. They're straight back out. That can sometimes be helpful. Can sometimes just continue the spiral. Which way will it fall in this match? It's a big one for them. I think it's a very big visit to the table for them as well because I think they had enough opportunities to win that match, certainly get something out of it. And I think they'll be very disappointed with the, the way they made the mistakes. They're both better players than, than what they showed us in that opening match significantly as well. Chance to take out a finish here. One at the top of the triangle area. Slightly more awkward than it looks. Definitely now. Another loose error from Nathan. And it's been the cue ball that's put them under just a little bit of pressure. I know they missed an eight ball. I know they missed a pot to the top right. I know there was mistakes like that, but it was the cue ball that put them under pressure for those shots. It's going to sit. It's going to sit. Just not quite happened for the pair of them so far this evening. And these reds are wide open as well. Chance for Dan and Sam just to run through these, get going in this match. Just the one frame for me in, that they had in the opening match. Felt that Dell should have probably won the frame against Jimmy Croxton. Didn't take his chance when it came along. Nearly stole it away with a brilliant shot from a snooker, but the chance he had at the beginning of the frame was a, a great one for, for Dell on his level. In the match, they ended up losing 3-2. One mistake is huge. And Danny and Lees and Sam Birch weren't, they weren't a million miles away, were they, in their first match? No, not at all. One of those that could have gone either way, but... And they'll be the happier pair coming into this match. They'll certainly be the happier pair when this eight ball sinks. 1-0 in front. So the boys from the Black Country, Dan Eaton Lees and Sam Bircher, representing the West Midlands tonight. Also, and Wolverhampton, respectively. I think it's easy to forget, particularly on Dan Eaton Lees' side, before he became an ultimate pool professional. And he's been, been here a couple of years now, so he almost feels part of the furniture in that sense. But he was on the inaugural Challenger Series, where, were it not, for Craig Waddingham parachuting in halfway through and winning everything in sight, he'd have been the number one in the Challenger Series that year. And in fact, I think Danny Eaton Lees was the only man to actually beat Craig Waddingham that year in the Challenger Series as well. Phenomenal talent and a real testament to him that he's he's improved a lot in the in the two years that have followed that. Yeah, those that know him and have seen him play and develop over the years, know how good he is and, and believe he's, you know, more than capable of being a tournament winner with Ultimate Paul. I think the biggest thing is, is he starting to believe that? We've seen performances and 
and matches and and some some sort of a couple of runs not not super deep but a couple of runs where you think yeah he's definitely he's definitely tracking in the right direction but you just get the sense he really needs to believe it and and start to make that next step through and get himself into into a final and try and win something because he certainly has the game for it yeah, and Nathan Davies here at the table will be thinking that currently about the Ultimate Pool Challenger Series. He joined the Challengers with a pretty decent reputation. Came from the black ball side of things as a very, very established player and was well fancied coming into this year's Challenger to really make a good run. But currently ranked 93rd. He's just struggling to, to put it all together speaking to him a little bit about it and he said it's it's the classic story of the challenge series he keeps running into deciding frame matches against good players and it is so cutthroat so ruthless even a player as talented as he obviously his resume in a moment is uh is struggling to get his head above water it's one of those tours though that it's a case of just hanging in there remaining positive and taking the chance when it comes along and he's more than capable of, of winning on that tour and, and getting himself right up that ranking list well how good has this been as a visit to the table from the welshman much more like it much more like it they needed well, that yeah big time the welsh wonders from our guides and Bryn Mao, respectively. They did give me a little bit of help with that pronunciation. <laughs> but Vokes and Davies, you can see there, Nathan Davies on the right. Welsh Open champion, Welsh Masters champion this year alone. Those results came in March and then July. So you can see how well he's playing. Yeah, there's a lot of very, very, very good players in Wales. And him to be taking down both of those events pretty good going also not a major surprise to see those results either that's that to me is a telltale sign of a very good player you know won't have been as fancy to some of the other players in the draw but certainly nobody was shocked to see him do it yeah Sam Birch's break hasn't got going tonight cut break just lacking that little bit of crunch so to the table comes Luke Vokes he himself, a very proud Welshman, a talented member of the Welsh black ball side. Big visit table for himself now. He's just seen Nathan take out a nice finish. Yeah, it's time for him to join the party, isn't yeah. it now? Saw Luke a few weeks ago in the Players' Championship. Starting to show us what he can do here with Ultimate Pool. Put together a good weekend without making it through. Yeah, and I was speaking to him a little bit about it earlier, and he said that weekend was really good for him because he's come over onto the Ultimate Pool Pro Series and he's yet to really hit, hit the sort of big lights, if you like. He's had a couple of, he's had a few very good wins, but then he's been swiftly knocked out. Hasn't seen the main arena very often on the Pro Series weekends. So he almost ends up feeling that he hasn't really been much a part of it. That Players' Championship weekend where all players really do get a very decent sight at the table. He, he more than held his own in, in what was a very, very, very good group. Sean Chipperfield was the man who came through that group, but played arguably probably the best anyone's played in the tournament so far to do that. Rob Warren wasn't too far behind him. Yeah, it was a, a tough group for him, but the, the experience of of playing eight matches out in the arena is invaluable for him as he goes through his ultimate ball career. Chance to really feel at home out there in the arena. and He certainly played like he was at home out there. just a touch too far to the right hand side would love to be absolutely straight in on this red 
That's why he's coming across to see if he gets all the way across the left-hand side of the table. Does the eight will go top right? If not, he's probably going to have to come on and off, and it's a tough one to judge and control. Yeah, it is. That previous shot just needed, I don't know if he potted it in the side of the pocket or not, but just maybe needed a trace of side or even used two cushions if he could, felt he couldn't hold on the straight. And must go top right, so that's an excellent shot. Yeah, tap of the knee from yeah, Nathan he's Davies, <laughs> who is right behind it, so he knows. Well, the Welsh boys finally come to the party and not before time as well. Nathan Davies and Luke Vokes both winning themselves a frame. And they'll now feel that they're a part of the night at the very least. And they've do both done it as well. It's not a case of yeah. one of them carrying. They've both come up with a finish now. I expect them both to play, you know, a nice level. At least somewhere near their level. Yeah. Because they haven't been so far tonight. Yeah, and the mistakes, you know, were being critical of them in the first match and it's only because I know how good they both are the, yeah. the mistakes they were making were were fairly simple mistakes you know it was just a case of running the cue ball too far here or there or stopping it when they needed to roll through a couple of rolls to make things harder and obviously the couple of big misses highlighted it but it was more a couple of the choices getting through to those misses visit to the table then for Sam and Dan here of course back to the back to the second scotch frame what's the plan are you looking at reds like the reds aren't too bad I think the bottom one of the three together will go and if they can land on that one they might be able to just softly open everything up without having really to move much be able to avoid a cannon but should open things up not quite as far across the table as they would have liked there though yeah a bit of a chat going on out there between them oh just just Sam Birch are giving that pot every chance down the rail. Landed in plum position, mind. Dale can just give this a little tiny nudge. Yeah, that's pretty good. If he was being hypercritical, I think he'd have loved to have been maybe slightly straighter. So I'm going to do a little bit of work on the red that's closest to the cue ball right now. Slightly awkward. Now, in potting this, does the natural go past the red? Or is he hitting the red? It, to me, I think it's just sliding by. It is, and he controls it well. In fact, he stuns it wider, so it may, the natural may have been just going into it. Comes on and off, so he can get on this into the, the right center. I'm not sure if they are or not, though. Yeah. Looks tight to the to the right centre. I was surprised if the natural was nudging that, but they didn't try and do that. Yeah, it, it looks very very tight. Watch Sam Birch just roll this one in. Yeah, we've been fooled before. No, it didn't. Double. Oh, it was close. I want. It did have the look to me that shot as if Danny and Lee's rather missed that cannon, but. but it, he widened the angle, and it, to me, it looked like the natural was close to being too wide of it anyway. And then he, he punched it in to, to widen the angle and come on off. It was almost like he tried to play that to get on it into the right centre, but that looked 
I don't know whether there was anywhere in that bottom left-hand corner where you could get onto that ball. It, it looked so tight. Maybe that, there must have been the way he played it. And if he was playing the cannon, it was a poor miss. Yeah. Yeah, agreed. Unless he felt he was trying to go on and off and go into it, and then he had to really get into it a lot more than he did because he knew the natural was missing it. But yeah, a tough shot. A couple of couple of shots along the way there that just meant it was getting trickier and trickier as it was going along. 15 second shot clock now in play. We've not spoken too much about that so far. It comes in at the five minute mark. And Luke Vokes has to get his skates on. And they've got a problem at the top of the table that's not easy to deal with. Need to cannon. No good ball to do it, unless they try and do it here and now. Shot. That is lovely. So all the balls now go. Not easy to get all the balls to do just that, though. Checks it up off that top cushion pretty well. All this yellow passes, that helps a lot. Just wondered, you can see it's tight. Didn't wonder if the other yellow was just in the way, but it isn't. So this now is a little bit simpler. like to get the cue ball a, a few rolls off the cushion again yeah not he could have done with another few rolls off it but he didn't want to risk missing the pot all it's going to do is put more pressure onto the eight ball he doesn't have too much choice other than just to drop this in and then the eight ball I don't think it'll go in the middle you have to take it long but you want to make sure that you don't leave the in off and he may well have left the natural in off here which is is no good do not have to really jack up yeah <laughs> really tough this not quite Luke Vokes unhappy they've not left the easiest route out though a grimace on the face of Nathan Davies oh he's held that really well that's well controlled a creative little shot that from Dan Eaton Lees on a 15 second shot clock. And we're going 2 2. Desmond with two minutes and change remaining in our Pairs Cup Eliminator. Well, all smiles for Dan Eaton Lees and Sam Bircher. It wouldn't have been had Luke Vokes knocked in that eight ball. Yeah, and Luke kind of put the pressure on himself. There was nothing that Nathan could do there. He had to uh, just drop it in. He had no other way. I mean, he, there was no way of getting better on the eight ball than he did. I mean, if he powers it in and, and tries to go onto the top cushion to lock, not leave the natural enough, maybe, but that would have made the pot very, very tough. The, the poor shot, the really poor shot, was probably the, the one from Luke where when playing the one to the bottom left, he, he's got to punch it in with more pace to widen the angle and, and get a few rolls off the cushion. You could argue that maybe Nathan could have done that on the previous shot so that then Luke can roll it in and then the last one become, you get naturally wider. But subtle, subtle issues there. You know, it's no, no, not a single shot in the whole visit was, was terrible. It was just slight differences make such a big difference. What a break to hit at this juncture. However, that little grimace there from Danny and Lee's. A little drop of the shoulders should tell you all you need to know about how the split looks. He's absolutely creamed that break, and this is pretty horrible. And we've got two minutes. This may well be the last frame. You can't lose it. You can't really draw it. Danny Lees has to go. He does. He's taken on the yellows, and I was trying to do the calculations in my head. If he'd gone reds, and reds are really tough, don't get me wrong, could he be the only one that would have a chance to win it? as in you wouldn't leave enough time to counter clear. I, I wonder on yellows, because there's a couple of balls less, whether the, if he doesn't get these, then there'll be time for the counter clearance. But I don't see how he breaks out the ball at the top. Has he got an angle now? No, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Just thinking the one into the left middle. Yeah, maybe, you may well be right. No, it takes it long, doesn't get there. He must have had a plan.
One minute then for Luke Vokes to win it. Now, and I, I always expected Dan to go reds because I thought the red by the eight ball was easier to solve. I know there were some problems down the table, but the red by the eight ball doubles, whereas the yellow doesn't. He is still going to try and break it out, I believe, though. Just like that. That's okay. That's gone as a plant. He can get these. Oh, that's gone a little bit smelly, though. He can use the yellow to hold, though. All right, then. Set to yourself, Luke. Doesn't love it. He's got 12 seconds to win the match. In it goes. Some very, very happy Welshmen. I think there will just be one more break in the match. Three seconds still on the watch when Luke Vokes potted that eight ball. It is their break though, so it's it very unlikely anything will over. happen. Yeah. yeah, that was essentially match ball. And a great match ball it was as well from Luke Vokes. Very, very good clearance. Best moment in a match for them by a, a long, long way. Yeah, absolutely. Under all that pressure. Yeah, the cannon could not have come out nicer for them. It was a brilliant shot. Hard to make the decision on which way to go, and I'm not trying to say that yellows were the wrong way to go there, but the only reason I saw red straight away was because I could see a way of dealing with the reds by the eight, or the red by the eight ball. But I think Dan had a plan. He just couldn't quite get to it. And they make a ball for good measure. Key ball does go in, but not that that matters too much. It's the Welsh boys who stay alive. Luke Vokes and Nathan Davies get the job done. And they are not out of it just yet.